Good morning, everyone. See people rolling in. How's this lighting? Do I need overhead lights? Let's see. Does that do anything? Not really. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get rolling and people can pop in as they'd like. Um, hey, everybody. How was your week? I missed you last week. We had family reunion, had a little break from launch and our team meeting and all of that stuff. Um, how many of you watched some of family reunion or participated in any way? Grady, I know Tom was talking about looking into it. Is there anybody who's planning on going back and watching classes or presentations? Yeah. Cool. I definitely recommend it. Um, there were, to give you a little recap and, and kind of a thing to think about for the future, um, Family Reunion and Mega Camp are our two big conferences every year with Keller Williams. Family Reunion always happens in February. Mega Camp always happens in August. Um, this August of 2020, Mega Camp went virtual. And then Family Reunion, of course, was virtual last week. So the um, mega camp always happens in Austin, Texas. Family reunion happens in different cities. So it should have been in Las Vegas this year, but of course it was in snowy Austin um, and virtual. So we'll see what comes of uh, mega camp for 2021. Um, but just to give you an idea, that's something you can always expect and plan for and budget for. Um, I would guess that based on how much effort and how much response they've gotten from the vir virtual version that I would guess that that may be something they continue to offer moving forward. Um, I definitely have gotten some real value out of being there in person. So it's something to consider down the line, but at least for starters or to get some really good information in a, in a you know, from a quality source, this is a great opportunity that it was so affordable. Um, you know, normally this is something you have to have a hotel for and you have your meals and your travel and also the cost of registration, which was pretty significant. Um, so being able to do this for like 120 bucks was really great. Um, there were some classes I was looking forward to that didn't happen. I would imagine because of the um, blizzard and the ice problems and the power outages and all of that going on in Texas, but there was still some really excellent content. So if you go back, um, I know Maureen mentioned this morning, um, the, the, there were two presentations with Gary Keller and Jay Papazan, who um, talked about personal finance, and those were really excellent. But if you're like, hey, I didn't sign up for family reunion, and I'm always in my car or whatever it is, 
go to your podcast source and upload Think Like a CEO. Think Like a CEO. It's Jay and Gary talking. There's five seasons. This latest season is season five. It is all about um, financial wellness, setting yourself up for financial success. It is excellent. I'm listening to it more than once because there's so much good content in there. Um, But as a new agent, the first season I think is really, really insightful. It's basically Jay interviewing Gary on the story of Keller Williams, how it came to be, how he views the company, where he sees it going. Um, It's just a couple of years old, so it's not super out of date with um, what's upcoming, but really great content. Um, that's free podcast, super worth watching. So it's my little commercial, um, but it does tie into what um, they talked about at family reunion. So really good stuff and gives you a, a much clearer picture of who Gary is and who Jay is and kind of how they see the business and how they work together. So I think it's just good to have that background on our company. Um, so that was that was one thing I thought was really great that they incorporated some more about you know, not only are you seeing your business as your CEO of your business, you're in charge of your business and your personal life, but how does that affect your finances overall? And how are you being intentional about that? So they really do practice what they preach um, and that's super appreciated. So I thought that was great. Um, There were a lot of the classes that they have are panels. So these presentations are led by one person They've got people in different markets all over the country and sometimes other countries, and they're asking them about something specific. So there was a panel about running a lean team. So running a smaller team, what are the benefits of that? How have they made that work for themselves? And, you know, what are they doing this year moving forward? Um, And those teams were, you know, anywhere from three people on the team to 12 people on the team. And that's considered a lean team. And their production was anywhere from a hundred units to 400 units. So these are more productive um, teams than some others, I would say. Um, But that was insightful if you're looking for that sort of information. There was also one about independent agents and how people have figured out, out a way to do business in a quality way at a high, um, higher volume and still have a life. And a lot of those people talked about having an assistant or multiple assistants or virtual assistants and how they've um, you know, utilized the availability of those people and their talents, as we like to say, leveraged um, to help them be very successful as an independent agent. So if you're feeling like I've got a good amount of business going on, or I need some help getting some stuff lined up to really feel like I'm keeping momentum going and keeping my pipeline flowing and keeping that connection and building relationships with people to build my business, then perhaps having somebody like that in the wings, doing some of that behind the scenes work is just what you need. Um, As somebody who did do that, I just brought on a pers- an assistant very part-time and just had her do um, five hours a week, some small things to start me out, um, following up with clients, some marketing type things um, that made a huge difference in where I could spend my time and kept that consistency of reaching out to clients going. Um, if you've had a transaction or two, you've probably noticed the roller coaster effect. Anybody seen this happen? where you're like, yay, I have a client. I'm all in. We're going on a hundred showings. We're going to write three different offers because this market's bananas. And I'm, I'm totally focused on my clients right now. And then you finally get an accepted offer. You go through the process, you close, and then you have nobody. And then you have to start all over again. And then there's a gap between your paychecks, to be quite frank. Um, so that that is a nice way to kind of keep that flowing. There are other ways, of course, as well. Um, A a few things that came up in that um, smaller team presentation were just the basics, the classic stuff we've talked about before. um, And one of them was time management. So it was someone who not only has an assistant, but is super intentional about how she's using her time. So it was it's always good to have that reinforcement. I think if you go to one of these events, 
if you watch these presentations, I think the thing to keep in mind is um, it's not meant to be an instruction of go do these 10 things today, um, but it's meant to give you some little nuggets of insight of things you've maybe been thinking about and it reinforces what you're thinking about or things that you haven't considered and oh my gosh, you know, lightning bolt, this is something that I should incorporate into the rest of my year. Um, but really it's a matter of pulling one good nugget out of whatever class you watch, whatever podcast you listen to, whatever book you read. These, the best way to use this information is not to, you know, look at your notes and take every single thing from there and implement every single thing. You're going to reinvent and overwhelm yourself on a regular basis and get nowhere. So pulling just a good nugget out of each one is really the key. Um, did everybody go to the team meeting this morning? Did you hear Maureen talking about the things she was pulling from family reunion? So as you listen to people who are experienced, who are finding success, talk about these events, events. that's the kind of thing they're doing. So they're you know, pulling one good nugget and figuring out a way to apply it or just giving themselves some time to think about it. And I've said it time and again, giving yourself thinking time every week is so important. So time to reflect, time to think about how you'd implement something, time to further research, time to lay out a plan, time to block in your schedule, whatever it is. I think that is, um, this is the kind of thing that you would plug into that thinking time. So um, a few things that came up that I thought were really interesting or good reinforcement of things I've thought about or done or even talked about in these classes, um, having a vision came up more than once across different presentations, different panels. Really having an identity and a value proposition is so important. And if you watched this morning, you heard Charlie talking about Zillow. Um, if you watched at Family Reunion, Gary talked about Zillow. There's this, oh my God, Zillow's coming. They're gonna take over. It's gonna be so bad. But at the end of the day, the thing that Zillow doesn't have in our market is an identity and a very strong vision, right? They're a search engine. They're a place to go to look for homes. But do they have a quality customer service procedure to back them up? Do they have, um, you know, happy client referrals behind them? They don't. So that alone is a good reason to think really intentionally about what your value proposition is. What do you offer? What makes you special and different? And what do you give your clients that they want and need, right? It's about them. It's not about you. It's not, I'm cool and great because I have blue hair. Like that doesn't do anything for my clients, right? It has to be what I do for them. It has to be how I make that experience great for them. So when you're thinking about your vision, either working as an independent agent or with the idea that you will be building a team at some point, or even if you've joined a team and you want to utilize their vision or kind of make it your own, having a really clear definition of who you are, what you offer is really important and sounds so basic, but do you have that elevator pitch at your fingertips? You know, we had, we had script off during family reunion, which is so interesting to watch. Um, but it's people being able to pull out their scripts, being able to, uh, genuinely, naturally true to them, express something or counteract a, um, a question, a concern, a challenge to something that they say or believe. Um, and it's, it's great. But really understanding what you stand for, what your value is, is huge because you're going to end up talking to somebody randomly on an elevator, in the grocery store, wherever it may be. Since there aren't many social events right now, you got to have this stuff ready. And people may ask, oh, you're in real estate. Tell me more about that. Well, I'm, you know, an independent agent. I'm at this amazing brokerage. We have great resources. You know, really for me, it's all about serving people in the North Shore. You know, for me, it's about an excellent customer service experience. I come from a fine dining background and it's all about that setting expectations and then exceeding your expectations. So whatever it is, something you can very clearly express to people, this can go on your website. You can do posts about it in social media. 
You can put a note about it when you're doing handwritten notes. Whatever it is, having a clear vision is so important. And it's one of those things that you can't just pull out of a hat. It's one of those things that using thinking time for is it's meant for. So give yourself that opportunity to really think about it and put a bunch of ideas on paper and pull out the points that are most important and put it in a neat little package, something you can quickly and easily express to people that you can be very consistent about. It's going to get you, um, help you have that strong identity. And what is it all about? Being top of mind. So if you have that strong identity, people will think of you. And most importantly, they'll be able to tell other people about you. I think, I think I've said this before. I worked in restaurants for years. And one of my biggest pet peeves is when a new restaurant opens and I can't describe it in five words or less. If I can't tell my friends about this place, if I can't sell my friends on why you're a great real estate agent in five words or less, in a simple sentence, in an easy, oh my gosh, they're great. Here's what makes them great then you need to work on your vision and identity, right? The best way to get referrals is when people can very easily, very confidently tell everybody else about you, tell them why you're great, tell them what you do for other people, what's going to benefit the people they're talking to. And then it's something they can confidently know you're going to follow through on, that you will back up, that you will be that person that they're selling out there to other people. So having a vision is super important. Um, being aware of your role and priorities. Now this came from a, a team presentation, um, but I think even as an independent agent, being aware of what your role is and what your priorities are based on that role can give you some real clarity. I think one of the things that comes up most often when I meet new agents or people who are early into their career or their business is, having the focused priorities in place. So it's very easy to feel like you have to do a hundred things. It's very easy to get thrown off track by somebody else's success or projects or ideas, but being very intentional about what is your role. When you're new, your role is to get business, find people, build relationships, connect, get appointments. That's your job, you're new. You are not established. People are not flowing in with referrals and past clients, right? I'm in year six, people are flowing in, but I still need to make sure I'm reaching out to people, I'm following up, I'm making connections, I'm staying top of mind. But especially when you're new, that is like job number one. The other thing you need to be working on, making sure you've got the things in place to help your clients be successful. So making sure you know that offer to purchase really well this market is brutal. I write great offers and I just had three rejected offers in a row and it's, it is rough out there. So understanding what you need to do to get an, an accepted offer in this market, helping to prepare your clients for that. These are important things you need to do as well. Cause yeah, you can get an appointment. Yeah. You can get by your agency, but if you can't find them a house and get an accepted offer, what's the point? So you've got a couple of things that you need to focus on when you're new. Is your role social media manager number one? Is that your first job? Probably not, but it's part of what you're doing to get your word out. Is your number one job transaction manager? If it is, then it's gonna be really hard to have new clients coming in after you've gotten through this transaction. So you have to wear more hats when you're new, but understanding what your priority hats are is really important. So being aware of what your role is and your priorities will help you in those moments when you feel overwhelmed or in those moments when you have extra time and you're like, what should I be doing right now? I could go on Instagram for an hour or I could you know, review the offer to purchase. I could watch that video about how to write a competitive offer. You know, There are other things you could be doing, whatever your role and priorities are in that time of your day, You know, not during your family time, but during your work time. Being aware of that, I think is really important. Another thing that came up a whole bunch that you hear me say all the time, and it's cause it's true, my friends, is writing down your goals, knowing your goals, talking about your goals, being aware of your goals, breaking them down to smaller bites, moving towards that goal. Um, 
everybody who was on panels that I watched had incredibly um, successful and impressive businesses, right? They had all these transactions. They had these great systems in place. They really understood how to connect with people. They really knew how to manage their money. They really knew how to manage people. But at the end of the day, what got them there was their goal. So they'd introduce themselves and talk about their production and where they are and how their team's set up. And they would say something like, we had a goal in 2020 to sell 100 homes and we sold 125. And we're really excited about that. Goals are really front and center. They're very top of mind for people who are finding success, right? If you're goal-driven, if you have a clear vision, it is way easier to push through those hard times. And it's much easier to feel the momentum of success if you know, oh, this is great. We're making headway towards our goal. You know, I had three rejected offers in a row. That is a hard hit, right? Like you don't want to take this stuff personally. You've got to protect yourself. But at the same time, like, I love what I do and I love my clients and that sucked, but I know what my goal is. I know what my goal is for my clients. I know what my goal is for my team. And we're still making steps in that direction. And I need to remind my clients of that, especially when we're in a tough market. So being aware of goals, I think is so important. It's an easy way to stay positive. It's an easy way to find your path in the darkness, <laughs> in the heavy wooded forest wow. of this buyers everywhere, crazy amounts of offers market. Um, and when you're trying to get listings too. So I think that again and again came up throughout family reunion. Um, you know, being aware of the next market, Gary and um, Jay talked about this, you know, what can we see coming up? We, there was a panel about this as well. Um, and one of the quotes that really stuck with me from that, that um, is a Gary quote. If you haven't noticed already, a lot of stuff Gary says gets quoted again and again, because it's really smart stuff. Um, he said, when it gets rough, put your head down and your heart up. Head down, heart up. And what he meant by that and what I saw examples again and again, and even during family reunion, quite frankly, was people who hit a situation that was a major issue, a catastrophic event in their community, like a flood or rolling blackouts because of an unexpected blizzard, whatever it was, COVID, we all experienced that last year. We're still in it. When that sort of stuff comes up, head down, heart up. So at the end of the day, the people who took the time to check in with their clients, with their sphere, with the people they care about, the people who found ways to connect and contribute and do something out of, um, from a perspective of giving, those people saw the additional benefit of business coming around after that. And that came up a few times um, when people were talking about COVID, especially that, you know, we're still in it. This is a hard time of year for people who are in winter climates. You know, everybody is itching for spring and it's been a rough 12 months and just being a, a bright light for somebody can not only be a good thing just in the world, but could potentially lead to helping to grow your business down the line. So that I thought was a really important quote and, and very topical for um, what's happening in the world right now and especially what was happening in Texas last week um, and this week still. Uh, another thing that someone said about what do you do when things get rough is focus on what you can control. Focus on what you can control. And I, not only for yourself, but this is a really important thing to arm your clients with. This is a crazy market. Whether you're a seller or a buyer, it can feel very overwhelming. And the thing that we can do that a computer search can't is help people work through a very stressful process. Being there for them. This is where you build strong relationships. This is where you show your value. This is where you really contribute. And it does come back to you tenfold. So helping your clients to see 
that which they can control in a crazy situation is so important. So if you have buyers who are out there looking and the market's super competitive and they're trying to write a strong offer, at the end of the day, giving them the steering wheel when you're putting together that offer and saying, here's how you can make it as strong as possible. It's up to you if you wanna do that or not, but this is probably what it's gonna to take to get your offer accepted. Is that something you want to do or not? It's in their control. And so if the offer doesn't get accepted, they've done everything they possibly can, everything they're comfortable with, everything that works with their budget to try to get this house. And if it doesn't work out then, well, they did all they could. They controlled what they could control, right? We can't control what the seller does. We can't control what the listing agent does. We can't control what the other buyers do, but we can control how we put our offer together. We can control how we interact with that listing agent. We can control when we send it over. All of those little pieces are gonna add up to potentially getting that offer accepted. And if they don't, then we give them that opportunity. Do you need a little time to mourn? Do you need a little time to take a break? Do you wanna get right back out there? Um, you know, here's what I can control. I can try to find off-market properties. So just helping people to see that as far as your clients go is big. And then of course, what can you control yourself? So if you're like, man, this market's really tough. I'm having a hard time getting going. Cool, well, what can you control? You can control how you communicate with your sphere. You can control how well you prepare so that when you do have a client, you are going to be a great agent for them. Those are the things you can control. Look to your goals, see where you're making progress, focus on what's important. Don't get caught up in all the things going on that you can't control. Leads you to nothing, it just spirals. Um, another part of that I came touched on before, but protecting your calendar. Um, this also means protecting your personal time. And this is from somebody who's real bad at that. Um, having time away from work is incredibly important. And uh, there was an agent who's an independent agent, but has assistance. She closed 150 transactions in 2020. She did a lot for her community during COVID. And um, after um, they had some flooding in her community uh, about a year ago. So she's really putting herself out there, but she's still finding ways to protect her time. So she's still blocking time in her calendar. She said, if it's not in your calendar, it doesn't exist. And that means everything. So you don't have to write every moment of your day, but if dinner with your family is important, put it in your calendar. If a day off is important and it should be, put it in your calendar, block it out. Because I can speak from experience. If I don't have it in my calendar and somebody asks me for an appointment, somebody wants to see a property, if there is an empty spot in my calendar, I will fill it with an appointment. And that isn't always the best thing. Giving yourself those thinking time blocks, giving yourself those times to make sure that you're setting yourself and your clients up for success, you know, controlling your schedule rather than saying, I don't know what time works for you. Just be the professional. You know, on Tuesdays from two to five is when I usually have appointments. I'd love to do a Zoom with you during that time for one hour block. What works for you in that time frame? Or, you know what? I have 3.30 open on Wednesday and I have a five o'clock on Friday. Would either of those work? Now, if it's a showing, we know first day or two on the market, it's gonna be gone. So there are times when you're going to have to be flexible. Um, but if you've got some non-negotiables built in or even a non-negotiable, you can scoot a little earlier or to the next day, at least it still has a place in your calendar. That's important. So uh, that agent said she was able to do that many, um, to serve that many clients in a year as the only agent on her team. Um, it was all about protecting her calendar and being really adamant about that. So not just writing it at the beginning of the week, but checking it every day, being very in tune to what's going on on there. Um, the other thing regarding tough times that I thought was something I know I'm aware of, but it was really good to hear again, is that when, when the going gets tough, that is when you really see who has their stuff together and who doesn't, right? In a great market where everybody's, you know, selling and buying, you know, listings are flying, you don't have to try that hard, right? 
crummy photos, half-hearted descriptions, no plan, no documents. It's just throw it out there, barely any effort. It'll sell, right? But is that agent going to be successful when it's less of a seller's market? Probably not. If you know COVID hits and suddenly you can't do the things you used to do, if you have a very strong idea of what your, your purpose is, your vision, your value proposition is, and how important your clients are to you and how you do business, you'll be able to pivot much more smoothly than somebody who doesn't really have their stuff together. So in your first few years, it's hard to feel like you're really solid in anything that you're doing, and that's normal. But if you have a good idea of what your intentions are, a good idea of what your goals are, a good idea of why you do this, that's going to give you a base to work off of. And when the going gets tough, having those systems in place, understanding the contract, those basic things is also going to help guide you through. Um, so I thought that was interesting. I think somebody said, you know, anybody um, can swim in high tides, but when the tide drops, you can see who's swimming without a suit on. So <laughs> you just knowing that this is the hardest of times, if you can figure it out now, if you can get your stuff in place now, if you can get clients now, you are going to be that much better when the inventory balances out. You're going to be that much better when we don't have COVID and you can do open houses. You're going to be that much better when things feel more normal and it's not so focused on some of the things we're focusing on now. So it's a tough time to be an agent to some degree, especially if you're working with a lot of buyers. But when it comes down to it, this is an opportunity. You know, when the market's low, if you can take market share, that market share is always yours. So whatever you can get your claws into and stand on and be confident in that as your identity and that as your farm, as that as the people you serve, as the what they can expect from you, whatever it is, make that your stance, have a very clear message, a very clear vision, because when things feel more normal, that's only going to work to your advantage. That's only going to be better for your clients and better for your business. So even though it stinks to some degree right now, and this inventory is concerning, there are still things you can do. Um, you know, there, this is an opportunity to be creative. This is an opportunity to really stand out against, um, others who maybe aren't as clear as to what their job is, who aren't as passionate, who don't manage their time, who really don't service their clients that well, who aren't worth their salt. Um, you know, big waves come and some things get washed out with the tide. So don't be one of those things. Make sure that you have a really good idea of what you can control and what you're here to do and focus on the things you can control. So I thought that was a good point and something that I do notice, you know, when the market crashed before a whole lot of agents went away, it took years for a good wave of new agents to come through. It's been a good market the last few years or so. A lot of more people have come in. So this is your chance stand out in the crowd in a good way. Um, you know, really establish yourself to the best of your ability in this market. And you will see the benefits as things balance back out when that time comes. <laughs> um, Another thing that came up a few times was bulletproofing the transaction. Has anybody had a transaction that has fallen apart or nearly fallen apart at this point? It's definitely more common right now with high stress outside of home purchasing um, with people feeling very um, like they're owed something when they write these offers that are 10 to 35,000 over asking price, even if what they're writing is market value, there's new challenges to being in a transaction once you have an accepted offer and bulletproofing that transaction is a really smart thing to do. Um, you know, it, it, yeah, Josie said she had to fall apart. It's, it's happening time. And again, there's some weird stuff out there. Underwriters are getting more sensitive. Some appraisals are coming in low, inspections are going awry when it's really something minor. Um, your job is to get us to the main goal, right? If your client's goal is to get to the closing table with the best offer they had, which is what they are, have right now in hand, then your goal is to help them keep perspective and get it to closing. 
with a win-win best case scenario for everybody's situation as best you can. So bulletproofing the transaction, one of the biggest things that came up was communicate. Um, Charlie talked about this today. There are agents out there who say, I only communicate by text. And if you've ever tried to communicate with an agent by text over something important, how does it go? It gets real snippy, right? Real fast, real fast. Not the way to do it. Anything that's a negotiation, pick up the phone. Anything that's a, you know, no news is good news, communicate with your clients anyway. They're just sitting there waiting to hear something. And while they're doing that, they are like doom scrolling on Instagram. They're spiraling out of control down a rabbit hole on Google about something that could go wrong with a furnace. Like communicate with them, get them in the loop, help them feel like they know what they can control, inform them, let them know you're there for them. And sometimes you just have to check in and say, I've got no news, but how are you doing? What can I do for you? What do you need moving forward? Do you need boxes? Have you looked into insurance yet? Um, you know, what do you, have you called We Energies? Can I provide that information? Whatever it is, checking in at least once a week is so important. And especially more often as you're getting around those contingencies. Um, you know, you think, oh, I called the agent. I know what's going on. Everything's good. Keep your client in the loop. Keep your co broker in the loop. Keep the lender in the loop. That the more communication you have, the more control you have over what's going on, the more awareness you have of what's happening, the less likely you're going to get blindsided by something that's going to blow up in your face because you can't quickly pivot and address it before everything falls apart. So communication came up a few times. Um, huge. It's huge. Huge, huge, huge. It's like the biggest thing you do in a transaction. It's communicate, 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 communicate. You have a listing, same thing. Here's what we're doing next. This is what's coming up. You know, you think, oh, they're probably working on getting the house ready and everything's fine. No, check in with them anyway. Be the person running the show. Hey, I'm checking in. How's this going? Here's what I'm doing. What's next? Or, hey, I don't have much to tell you, but just wanted to see how you're doing. I'm here to be your resource. Be the one running the show. Don't wait till your client calls you. Don't wait till the co calls you. Don't wait till the lender calls you. And they're like, hey, what's going on? We thought you had this together. That's when stuff gets weird. So being on top of that is huge. Um, and that goes hand in hand with being proactive, just keeping people informed, huge. Um, the other things that were a common thread in um, presentations and family reunion, mindset came up quite a bit. Um, I think that was really top of mind for people who were there putting that together. Josh team said 50 to 70% of their staff were without water, power, or both during this huge virtual conference to 50,000 people across the country and the world. Um, and so mindset is major, major. People get through terrible things all the time and it's amazing and it's impressive. And it seems like something that, you know, just that one special person can handle. Not true. Mindset is something you can control. Mindset can be as simple as looking for the most positive piece of what's going on. Mindset can be knowing that you're going to focus on what you can control and stuff's going to happen, but you're going to get it. You're going to get through it. You're going to get your clients through it. So mindset is something I talk about a lot. I know Janine talks about it. It comes up in a lot of the podcasts and books that I read and, um, videos that I watch. It's a very common thread in Keller Williams and bold. Um, if you do that class at one point, but basically mindset overarches everything, how you approach what you do, your attitude about it, your attitude about a situation, um, you know, humble bragging about everything blowing up in your face and how you haven't taken a day off in two weeks. And how this other agent is a pain in your butt might be fun drama for a moment. But if your mindset is always looking for the problems and looking for the gossip and looking for the things that you can complain about, that's going to wear on you, especially in this market. So really taking a moment to think about how you're viewing things, put on a lens that's going to be best for you, your business, your family, your clients. These are challenging times. This is a challenging time of year. So being in control of your mindset and sometimes just doing an attitude check can really help. 
if that's, you know, taking a breath in your car for a minute, if that's, you know, really mindfully enjoying a snack or a coffee without being on your phone, like just sort of getting yourself in check and being aware of where you're at and resetting if you need to is huge. Um, and that came up quite a bit. The other thing that I took away was um, being aware of statistics and data. So I'm all the touchy feels, that's my thing. I love systems and organization, but when it comes to tracking numbers of things, so often I'm going off of how I feel about something or what I'm noticing, and there's value to that, but having actual statistics is huge. We have them handed to us on a silver platter every week by Charlie, and those are valuable. Use that information. Use it to share with your sphere. Use it to share on social media. Use it to talk to your clients as an informed professional. And if you're trying to focus on a certain, um, like a group of people like new home buyers, or um, you're trying to focus on people selling their homes, you're focusing on a certain neighborhood, use your resources that are you're paying for or they're free to get the details of what's going on in that market. Be well informed because when it comes down to it, that's one of those things that when stuff hits the fan, the agents who don't really know what they're talking about are very exposed. And the ones who know what's happening are the ones who look like the rock stars. So it makes it so much easier to pivot if you know what is happening in your market, if you know um, what is an advantage to a seller or a buyer, if you know what patterns are happening and maybe those lead metrics to show us what might be coming up and being aware of that ahead of time can really help you in your business. So that was something that I'm gonna take and um, be more conscious of and build into my um, quarterly goals and how I spend my week um, to make sure that I'm really on top of what's happening in terms of statistics. So not just pulling a CMA, but looking to, to see like what's going on with expired listings in the neighborhood, um, you know, days on market with, um, you know, certain, certain types of homes, are they on a corner, stuff like that. Being really aware of the details and knowing the stats behind it, I think is gonna be advantageous, especially if you're trying to win a listing in this market, but also to help prepare your buyers um, and sellers for what to expect from this market, because it's a little wacky right now. Um, but the market is the market. We can't control the market, but we can control what we do within the market. We can control what we know about the market. We can control how we prepare our clients for the market. So there are still things you can do no matter what's happening in the market. People are always finding success. They found it when the market crashed. They have found it through COVID. Um, you know, don't think that that's a reason why you can't find success right now. Um, so being aware of what's going on and being able to prepare your clients for that can be also very good um, for your business and for them. So those are the major points I took away. Um, the All of the information about personal finance and building what financial wealth, um, I think is worth looking into. If nothing else, it was inspirational to um, have something to aspire to, to kind of have that in the back of my mind. Um, so I, I think that could be helpful. The season five of Think Like a CEO, they put out all the episodes at once. So you can listen to them like when you're driving between appointments and stuff like that, just to have like in the background. Um, but I think that's worth looking into as well if that's um, something that's going to help you clarify your goals for the year and get some motivation. Um, so did anybody pull anything from either if they watched any of the presentations or from our meeting this morning or from this class today that you're feeling like is something you've been thinking about working on, you'd like to work on, um, you want to put it out there for accountability's sake? or have some thoughts on? We've got a little bit of time. I did a whole lot of talking today, so it's, not, it's your turn. <laughs> I was interested in the script competition when they were talking about, what do you say when, if I sell my house, there's no houses to buy, what, what's the line that you can use? Yeah, so there's, there are a few different approaches to this. The thing I'm seeing um, is very popular right now and, and kind of started hitting our area in the last couple of weeks is 
telling sellers and making this a part of the MLS um, agent notes that they, um, they may as well put their house on the market. They're going to get a great response. And so we can put it out there with the message to buyers that they would like to close ASAP and have post-closing occupancy for 45 to 60 days. And the thought behind that is it means they could close as soon as possible and get the proceeds from that sale. And then they can get their pre-approval without being home sale contingent because a home sale contingent offer in this market has next to no chance of getting accepted. So closing early and then having occupancy of the home for 45 to 60 days, however you set that up, you would use an addendum O if you had a buyer. Addendum O is sort of like a lease. It's sort of a one page lease of sorts, um, but it defines many things that um, buyers would probably have questions about and sellers when it comes to that occupancy period. Um, but that's something I'm seeing more and more. So telling a seller like, hey, you don't have to wait till June to put this house on the market. We can get it on the market now. We can ensure that you have a sale closed and you don't have to move out of your house. And a lot of buyers right now are open to that, which was not the case even six months ago, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing to keep in mind, I, Betsy said she thought it was limited to 30 days. So the thing to keep in mind is if the buyer has a mortgage, which in many cases, if a seller is moving up, then the buyer is moving into something entry level, they probably have a mortgage. Um, if they have a mortgage, you have to, as an owner occupant, occupy the property within 60 days. That's what most lenders require. So, you know, being generous and giving more than 60 days could be a problem for your client. So just being aware of that too. But that's coming up a lot. Um, I'm seeing that more and more, and that's certainly a good way to get people to get their home on the market and to take advantage of the slow inventory as a seller and be put into a really ideal position. So that's one of the things that I have been telling sellers as well. People have been thinking about waiting. Um, you know, also just the in, insane demand right now. Um, you know, will we still see that in a few months? It'll, there'll be a high demand, but right now people are willing to strip their offers of contingencies and appraisal. I mean, it's, you can get the best case scenario possible right now as a seller. So if you're even thinking about selling, this is your chance. So that's one of the things I would say to encourage people to get out there on the market right now. It really is to their advantage. Good question. Anybody else? Uh, Things I think that, my biggest, yeah. sorry, um, my biggest takeaway. So when they were talking about Zillow and they were talking about artificial intelligence, they were saying also there's agent intelligence. I don't really like have the exact quote but that like kind of struck me hard and like how doing like seminars, like first buyer or first time buyer like seminars. And like, that's kind of like how the, I guess the uh, market is curving. Uh, so mm -hmm. like, you kind of got to get ahead of it uh, as far as that's concerned, but like customer service, like knowing what you know, like to be more, comp I guess like more of an asset than like Zillow or an, any search engine would be. Yeah. Having that confidence that comes from, being a knowledgeable professional does not necessarily mean you have to have years and years in the business. Yeah. Have you met agents who've had years and years in the business and don't seem professional or knowledgeable? Yes. Time does not yeah. equal experience or knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that's a good point, Grady. Like, you know, you can be new and still be um, confident in what you know and be confident in what you have to offer. Um, and yeah, at the end of the day, like people want to work with people. They don't necessarily want to plug in a number into a screen and then be waiting for a screen to tell them what's next. This is a big deal. It's a big purchase and it's emotional. There will be people who are attracted to this AI, you know, set it and forget it kind of approach. But I can tell you from working with hundreds of people, People need people through this process. They need somebody who's going to be there for them emotionally and in a positive way and as a solid resource and having something on a screen isn't going to cut it. So don't let that stuff freak you out too much. I think you have a great point, Grady. It's agent intelligence. 
It's what we have to offer people. And it's being really confident in what that is that we offer that they can't find elsewhere without having to say, well, that thing is bad because just talk about what you're good at. Just talk about the benefits of working with you. Um, that's all you really need to do when people get it. Yeah, I think one of my big takeaways between you know the meeting is just the inventory deficit that we're seeing right now <clears throat> and like how extreme it's gotten. Um, Rick Rubin sent a quick stat to our team yesterday, I think would be interesting to read. He said that there are only 70 active homes in Bayside, Fox Point, River Hills, Shorewood and Whitefish Bay. This is half of what we would typically see. What's stunning is that of the 70, all but 13 have accepted offers. Of those 13, only three are under 500. So just the idea that we all have so many buyers looking and there are <clears throat> three homes in the North Shore under 500 without offers. So yeah. Charlie was saying, you know, one week is, you know, an anomaly, two weeks is a trend. So I think looking at this next week is going to be really kind of, you know, determining this coming spring market. Um, Cause I think that's a little worrisome for a lot of people right now. Yeah. And Benji, do you feel like having, being armed with those statistics, do you feel like you have a much better idea of how to prepare your clients? Yeah, I mean, at the same time, it's hard to advise a client to like overpay so much for a property. You know what I mean? I looked at a house in Mac one this past weekend with them and they had done nothing to the property since they bought it four years ago and it appreciated $90,000 in their eyes. Mm -hmm. Like I can't comfortably tell my clients to pay that at the peak right now. So it's just, it's hard. Yeah. And I think, I mean, to some extent, we're going to continue to see increase in value. So that idea of overpaying is situational, I think. Um, you know, we're still seeing that increase in value. We're expecting that to happen. Um, so people should still get a return on their investment. At the end of the day, a great script for that is real estate is about holding. Investments are about holding. So if you're going to buy a home, um, you know, at the top of your budget, plan to be there for more than five years holding will eventually result in cash you'll get cash back um, even going through the crash you saw people who hung on through the crash and then rode the wave back up are seeing nice returns now if they bought in like 07 um, so yeah I think knowing that statistic too can be really helpful um, Benji and everybody else when it comes to understanding how to approach working with your clients, you know, that tells me if you've got somebody in the North shore and they, there is a home that they're interested in, there is real urgency there. You need to get them in the door now and you need yep. to prepare them to write a very aggressive offer. And it's helpful to give them that perspective. Look, this seems kind of bleak, but this is the market we're in. Someone's going to get that offer accepted. I want it to be you. You want it to be you. What do we need to do to make that happen? We know there are three homes under 500,000 that don't have offers in the North Shore. How are we gonna make this happen for you? Um, it does help them understand the urgency without scaring them, right? So that's the key is how do you deliver this message? Um, you know, knowing the statistics and not just like, boom, three houses, doesn't that suck? Like, cool, that's not gonna help anybody. So how can we approach this? I'm here as your professional expert and guide. I'm not just blabbing statistics. I'm gonna tell you, not that you are, but I'm not just gonna tell you these things. I'm gonna say how we're going to use that. Um, what can we control? How are we going to approach this? This means we need to move quickly if we see a great house pop up. This way you avoid all that stuff that agents complain about like, oh, my buyers are dragging their feet. Oh, they looked at two houses today and they say they're not ready yet. Like be proactive, set them up for success. Having this information can be really helpful. And you can say like, well, these areas are very limited in, in inventory. Maybe we look to Glendale. Would you be open to Glendale? Would you be open to Brown Deer? Would you be open to parts of Milwaukee or you know, looking somewhere totally different? What is it really that's important to you? Let's define that first. Are you just latching onto a location because that's something you're aware of and you know, or is there a real reason behind it? Or maybe we look somewhere totally different where you can get more for your money, maybe a little less competition. So being that expert, being the go-to person puts you head and shoulders above a Zillow search, right? Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Rick's full of thoughtful information and statistics. He's a great resource. He 
Yeah. Anybody else have some thoughts for our last couple minutes? Are you processing? Are you feeling empowered to move forward and do some good stuff this week? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you tired? Are you sick of the snow? <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> All of the above. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know, at the end of the day, being um, a positive force, being somebody who is moving forward with momentum and happy to grab people along the way, that's the kind of attitude and energy that people are attracted to, especially right now. So if you can be that person, don't get mired in the details. Don't feel like you have to do 25 things this week in order to be a successful real estate agent. Just focus on the stuff you can control. Focus on your vision and your message and what your intention is to do for your clients, how you want to live your life, where you see yourself at the end of this year. That's what you should focus on. Yeah, the snow is annoying. And yeah, it's, you know, it's been really cold. And yeah, we could all use a vacation except for COVID. And so if we go, we feel guilty and it eats us alive. Like there's so many things we can't control right now. So just focus on the stuff you can't. Just get back to the basics. Focus on what you can control. Help your clients focus on what they can control. Be that solid, go-to, positive, informed professional and expert that will, that will bring you business. I cannot express this enough. They just fall from the sky. The more you're putting the word out there, the more you're connecting with people, the more you're coming from a place of contribution, it's going to happen. You just have to have faith, keep plugging away, taking those baby steps towards your goals, give yourself thinking time to be reflective and do an attitude check when you need it. This is a whole life thing. This is not just business. This is everything that you do in your life that gives you that balance, that makes you that person that allows you to be the best you can for your business and your clients and your family and yourself. Um, and all of that's really important. And this is a challenging time of year and it's a challenging market and it sounds really scary and the sky is falling because of Zillow and the inventory and whatever. But at the end of the day, you still got to keep plugging along. People are still selling homes. People are still getting accepted offers. I got one this weekend. I got one. <laughs> you got to celebrate those victories, you know, focus on what you can control. It's especially important right now. And it's important to share that message with your clients. Be that go-to, be that example. You're going to see people flock to you. It will just start happening and it takes a little time. You've got to be consistent and you've got to keep plugging at it. But I'm telling you from experience, it will blow your mind how many people just keep coming up despite the crazy market and despite COVID, and despite the time of year, they will just come to you for that advice and guidance and help. And it might be that they're a year out, but great put them on your little post-it board, talk to them, provide them resources, um, be that go-to person um, and just help them to focus in on what they can control and keep in touch. Um, it's really so basic, you guys. I say the same thing every week over and over again, but it really comes down to those really essential things. Um, and your mindset overarching everything is key. Absolutely key. So if you'd like to set up an accountability call, text me. Um, my number is 414-534-7982, 534-7982. Um, if you've had one before and you haven't done one in a while, I don't care. I'm not judging. Just text me. Um, this is a chance to check in about your goals, to talk about your progress, to brainstorm what you can do next week and to walk away with something you're going to work on in the next seven days or up until our next call. Um, if you need help with contracts or situations, that sort of thing. Um, the helpline is a great resource, Andy and Stephanie. And also we have Joan Reed now, who if you have not talked to her, just call her to check in. She's amazing. She was my coach and my manager when I started in this business um, at a different brokerage. She helped me set the foundation for how I do my business today. And she's amazing. So if you're looking for somebody to give you a little guidance, um, a little bit of encouragement, she's great for that too. Um, we are all here to help you be successful and be your resources and go-tos and cheerleaders. So don't feel like this market means you can't do business. You can't um, help people get to a happy closing. Um, this is a time when you can still do all those things. You just have to be really focused and intentional about it. 
So when things ease up a little bit, you'll just be cruising. This is the time to you know, make the most of the situation because it's only gonna get better. If you can find success now, you will always be successful. So I leave you with that. I hope you have an awesome week. I look forward to hearing from you and we'll be back next week. Take care. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Thanks Amanda. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too.